Slow motion is a function that comes with almost any devices that we buy nowadays. In this video, I want to break down some of the implications of what slow motion does to the people who are watching your videos. What are some of the implications that you should really consider and learn to understand carefully of when to use this function, choosing the right amount and the right duration as needed? What are some of the art principles that are triggered by using slow motion? If you're new here, my name is Gabriel Lang, artist and photographer based in Hong Kong. This is a channel created all for the mission to empower image makers with a better vision through the understanding of visual language and photography with occasional Q&A sessions just to inspire you to become a more all-rounded creator, mind, body, and soul, hopefully. It has been a while, I must confess. With the fifth wave of pandemic hitting Hong Kong, the bounce back effect really hit us hard. For the past two months, workload for the studio has almost doubled or tripled, which really got into the way of making more videos for this channel, which I really enjoy doing. So, but because of that, we have more interesting content to share in the future. You guys like the new setup with the kind of DJ setting? I don't personally like it that much. In the studio setting, we can't really soundproof um, a lot of the surroundings, the walls, the ceilings, because we have to keep them clean. We have to keep them uh, quite you know, neutral as walls, as white walls and ceilings, because sometimes we do capture images showing them. There is a mask factory up above us, which knocked down four units all connected together, and they work 24-7. Uh, 365 days. The noise picked up. It's pretty annoying, and so a lot of times, like I have to, you know, try to talk over it. But then the echo is really bad. So hopefully this would improve. Anyway, if you are ready, let's dive right into today's topic on slow motion. At the end of this video, I would like you to be able to answer it for yourself. How much slow motion is too much? So you have slow motion in your camera or your phone, congratulations. You probably have shot something in terms of uh, frame rate around 50, 60 frames, 100 frames or 120 frames per second. I mean, just flip over to a slow motion function on your phone and you, you'll be shooting at least 100 frames per second. And everything that you show during playback, it's slower than real life. But you might be thinking and looking at your shots saying, how come it looks a bit different from what you've seen out there? It just doesn't look as good. Obviously, apart from capturing, there's the editing part, which really changes the outcome of a video or a film. It goes without saying, you know, action movies such as Matrix, Batman, Marvel series stuff. I mean, these are really carefully planned productions. Slow motion is not overdone. So popular YouTubers also use this function of slow motion widely and wisely with a lot of experience under their belt. However, occasionally I do still see some videos put together and using slow motion in a bit of a redundant or just unnecessary kind of way where there is nothing to emphasize, nothing epic to really show the viewer, especially for someone just walking from left to right. Music videos are probably one of the most common places where you would see a lot of moderate slow motion, even for the whole video from start to finish. For that kind of presentation, it's more of a language to convey the overall mood Essentially, slow motion is a result of a faster frame rate captured by the camera, causing a slowdown playback, allowing us to see more with our naked eye. We will now introduce three plus one tips to see how slow motion can make or break your video. Tip number one, surrealism. We just have to address this, is why do we use slow motion? Well, scientifically, we slow things down because we want to see more within the given normal real time. One second is one second, but if we slow it down enough, it doesn't appear one second anymore. One second becomes a minute. 
So what is slow motion offering us? It's offering us about seeing the unseen. Since we're seeing more information and detail that we normally wouldn't be able to see in real time, it makes the scene surreal or unreal. Taking Salvador Dali's quote from the beginning really sets a nice stage for this discussion. I mean, the uh, iconic surreal painter really has done extensive artistic experiment on how to reach out into people's unconscious through visual communication, through symbolism, connotations of dreamlike sceneries. I would argue that what makes slow motion so captivating is not only because of the increase of information in the playback, but also because it creates a doorway for us to momentarily escape from reality. Using what you have captured as raw material and altering its time, presenting that again to your viewer, is an implication of your intention to offer surreality. If we use Dali's language of reaching people's unconscious through the depiction of a dream, I will leave you to this question. How long do you think your audience would like to stay in that dream? Tip number two, attention. Slow motion is part of the attention-seeking family. It's another way of saying, uh, look at me, something is happening. This right here is worth your attention. All eyeballs on me, pay attention. A common example is the use of speed ramping for subject that has a lot of actions going on. For example, snowboarding, a jump, uh, something dropped and smashes to the ground. There's a clear point of climax and also versus moments of less interesting buildup to that climax. But as a filmmaker or anyone working with moving images, you have to understand that everyone has limited attention span. So congratulations, you have grabbed their attention. Now, how long are you planning to keep that going? And how long are you planning to continue to offer them something on screen to engage with that attention? So I think that's really the question for you as a creator. Are you going to change up the speed when they have hit the end of their attention span? Are you going to change up the scene and offer them something different? Uh, is that going to work with your storytelling? And by doing so, are you still keeping your story interesting and coherent? Or are you diluting the main path of your story because of the length of the footage? and losing the overall momentum of what you're trying to capture your audience. Tip number three, suspense. So apart from using slow motion for a climax or the very best part of an action, it can actually be creatively used as a buildup. So by choosing to slow down moment that is less interesting or less active implies something is about to happen and something is about to change on screen. So slow motion doesn't always have to be the protagonist of a timeline. It can also be negative space setting up for progression. So when trying to create suspense using slow motion, a key concept to understand is the use of contrast, like the calm before the storm. Without it, the storm wouldn't seem so powerful after all. A reverse way of thinking is imagining seeing a scene of climax after climax, actions after actions. It should grab our attention, but in fact, our brain would grow numb to all of it and eventually disengage altogether. This is where slow motion comes in handy by prolonging the wait, which creates suspense with growing anticipation. So if you're learning something new so far, be sure to encourage me to make more of these videos by liking, subscribing, and hit that bell notification so you won't miss any future contents. So here's the plus one tip for you. Now for everything, there are exceptions. Most of the common concepts when using slow motion kind of prompt us to use slow motion wisely, use it effectively, how to enhance your film, your video, your edit, but also use it creatively. I'm not talking about speed ramping, I'm not talking about you know slowing down on a particular climax of the scene, and these are all kind of under the territory of just being effective, being wise about using it. But these are also where it's expected to be slow. It's not particularly being used in this film, which I want to bring up. It kind of convey that concept of using slow down footage or slow down scenes creatively to really control people's anticipation. And that is the film I really like, which is The Stalker by Andrei Tarkovsky uh, back in 1979. A you know, classic cinema piece. 
but I would definitely challenge you to go watch this film, The Stalker. Certain scenes use very slow camera movement. They're not exactly slow motion, they're just very, very slow, and there are not a lot of things happening on screen, not leading to any kind of climax or leading to any kind of action event. The character enter into this place called the zone. It wasn't particularly slow in terms of frame rate, but it was just really slow moving uh, as a scene. And it would get to a point where you would expect something to show up on screen, something to happen, some kind of change of speed, change of subject. And it got to a point where, no, there's nothing happening and you start to disengage. So you're constantly like at this verge of losing your attention and you probably have lost your attention already. But then after a while, because you have nowhere else to go, you decide to re-engage with the same slow moving scene again, pushing the kind of film language in that way. So what is he trying to achieve through using this kind of language? Well, he was trying to emphasize the eeriness of a place, of raising our awareness, our uh, attention to the tiniest unimportant detail, such as the grass, the, the clouds, the branches, the light, the walls, our sensibility to any kind of stimuli that's presented on screen becomes extra sensitive to these. And he's really like trying to use a different approach to using quote unquote slow motion in that respect. So here's the take home tip for you. Now, the take home tip is always a good place to start for uh, anyone trying something new. And that is knowing when to stop, not to start, to stop. Slowing down a scene implies the importance of the subject that you're showing. Now, what is important is different for every person, and especially with different cultural background and different age, different gender. This becomes problematic a lot of times. When you are trying to create a piece and edit your video or capture something, you want to really be in the seat of your audience and learn to understand what they're interested in and what they might not be interested in. So a lot of times you might think certain things are very epic, and worth certain attention from the audience. And in return, you didn't get that result. And you would be picking your brain and thinking, why did it not turn out the way I wanted? Everyone has a different background, whether it's cultural, whether it's uh, just the way they were brought up, their education. And so be aware of that and be sensitive to that. Don't just slow things down because you didn't know what to do with that footage. You must always have a reason for using slow motion. That's just a good rule of thumb. So know when not to use it. Keep it short, you know, so when you do use it, you know, know when to stop, know when to cut, know when to really draw the line of now is the time to withdraw and move to a next scene when you edit. Half a second, one second, two seconds. It really depends on your overall footage, how long you want to keep it for. Every person's style of editing and storytelling is different. It could be longer than what I just mentioned. You really have to decide depending on the full length of your final outcome. Never use slow motion to fill time, okay? So if you need your footage to be at a certain time to end or you need things to happen and you're just not having that shot, you couldn't find it, you didn't capture it, it's not for filling gaps. So a quick recap on the three tips on some of the art principles that would trigger your viewer's perception are surrealism, attention, and suspense. So with a newfound understanding of slow motion, I would challenge you to go out there and find a subject that has certain motion or actions happening. Take a walk in the park, capturing your children, your dog, go to a sports game. Be attentive in observing your subject and think about you know, which part of the scene that you would actually want to capture in slow motion. And review your shots. Really articulate to yourself which are some of the shots that are more successful while others are less. What kind of uh, principles are you trying to uh, gauge and uh, decide on that? So this pretty much wraps up the first episode where I talk about one camera function as a departure point that triggers certain visual languages instead of focusing on one art vocabulary. You know, let me know down in the comments, you know, tell me did you like it? Are there functions that you would like me to talk about in the future? I plan to do a few more of these, so let me know in the comments down. So I hope by now you will look at this function of slow motion very differently. And you will realize that knowing about slow motion is one thing. Being able to time your subject is a completely different one. So go check out this video where I talk about the art of anticipation, a concept where every creator should master.